Well, I've been meaning to run this test for quite a while. I actually unboxed this Unitech USB 3.0 um, to SATA 2 adapter quite some time ago. So it comes with a power plug, which I'm just going to kind of crawl under the table here and plug into my already loaded up uh, power bar there. Okay, so you got a power plug. So that's going to provide all the necessary power. Okay, so now the light turns on. And then I just wanted to do a quick speed test with this thing on a motherboard that actually supports USB 3. So in this case, I'm using the P7P55D E Premium. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it into an SSD to give us the fastest possible speeds out of it. So you just plug it in like that. Matches right up with the SATA interface on the drive. These things are so useful when you have something on a test bench that you need to, uh, to pull data off of or if you're just you know, running diagnostics on a hard drive or whatever else. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the uh, the Seagate USB 3 cable I've got in there now. Plug in this one. There we go. So the Vertex 2 is detected already. Okay, there we go. Vertex 2. Yep. Okay, so let's get this opened up here. And let's just do a quick test. So first of all, why don't we do... Oh, okay. My movie's done. All right. So I got my big files folder. Okay, why don't we just do the big files folder? So I'm actually, I'll do a quick read test, although I don't know how useful that'll be. So, ah, cancel, no, no, delete, get rid of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this off of the drive that I just installed and I'm gonna paste it onto a Vertex 120 gig. So this isn't go, gonna go as fast as it probably potentially can. This is only going at about 83 megabytes per second, 90. So this is gonna be pretty much capping out the Vertex 120. This is the original Vertex, whereas this is a Vertex 2. So the difference between these drives is that they both have excellent read speeds, but the Vertex 2 just wipes the floor with the Vertex 1 in terms of writes. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I've got this file copied onto the desktop, I'm going to go ahead and copy it back onto my Vertex 2 drive. So this should actually go quite a bit faster and we'll probably see pretty much the limits of USB 3 here. So this is going at uh, 162 megabytes per second. So that's very, very fast. It's a little slower now. It's gone down to 128. So about 130 megabytes per second. So we're not even approaching the limits of the drive, but this is probably the practical limit of what we're going to see from the NEC USB 3 controller. And if you really want to know how long these tests took, I guess you could just kind of, I don't know, run back the video and then you'd know. So anyway, there we go. There's the speed test. It's done now and there we go almost and it's done. Okay, so that's the Unitech USB 3.0 to SATA 2 adapter. You know, I'm kind of curious about something though. Let's see if it works without the power plugged in with a two and a half inch drive. Um, okay, why don't I sort of give it a chance to like try over, try again here. Cause that would be an advantage that that Seagate cable from the, from their modular hard drive has if they're able to uh, plug into an SSD without an additional power source. Okay, your device is ready to use. Plug it in. Let's see if we can run a two and a half inch drive off of this particular cable. Your device is ready to use. USB mass storage is what it's calling itself this time. It looks like, no, it cannot. That's quite unfortunate, but I mean, the power allows you to also potentially plug in uh, much more draw power drawing devices. So here, why don't we try this then? Since we're on the subject of testing things, I actually tested the Seagate cable, which is here. This one right here, the one from that modular interface uh, external hard drive. And that worked without external power with a an SSD, but what it didn't work with was a, an optical drive. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this Unitech one into a DVD drive and see if that works when it actually has power. So installing device driver software, click for status, CD-ROM drive, so it's working on it. So it all depends on what kind of a solution you're looking for. If you want something that works without any sort of additional cables and muss and fuss, then I guess you want something like the Seagate cable. If you want something that will actually work with a wider variety of uh, higher power devices, it looks like this Unitech cable is about to work. But we don't have evidence of it yet. There we go, ready to use. And let's see if it shows up in here. Refresh, refresh, go, go, do it now. 
there we go. So I can use my CD drive, which I don't think I have anything installed in. So there you go. That was my big test, and I managed to drop my headphones. Thank you for watching my video blog, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, oh, okay, I have a Cronus True Image in there. Cool.